Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I'm looking at a brand new game coming to Kickstarter called Frozen Frontier. This is a new one from Cosmo Drone Games. It is a one to four player game. It takes roughly one to two hours to play, and is a competitive game where players are going to be competing throughout the game to gain victory points. And at the end of the game, the player that has the most will be the winner. So in the game itself, this is set in the future, and Earth is on the brink. We are way overpopulated, and we have depleted most of our resources, and have set upon the galaxy to try to find a new planet to inhabit it. And we've found a couple of them that have the different resources we need, and so our corporations have set out to inhabit these different places and mine these precious resources, moving and building different cities, and creating different environments that will produce different resources that we need that we can send back to Earth, to keep that going as well. So in the game, you are going to be playing one of these corporations. You are going to take your turn and perform different actions during your turn to build different buildings on the different cities, collecting different cards that will allow you to hopefully complete them, which will give you different abilities that you can activate throughout the game, creating an engine that will slowly get you more and more victory points, hopefully, if you've done it right throughout the game and will hopefully lead you to victory at the end of the game. So in this video, I'm going to cover the main features of the game and show you a sample turn to give you a rough idea how the game plays. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow, be able to produce this content. If you want to get notifications anytime I release new videos, also give that notification bell a ring and that'll let you know when I drop new stuff. I do also want to point out that all the materials you see here are prototype materials and are subject to change and it'll look a lot better in the final production copy of the game. So let's go ahead and head to the table, and we'll see what this one's all about. The first thing we'll look at are the player boards, and these are going to be broken down into three different sections. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get to choose a corporation board, and each corporation board on the back side is going to list the different starting resources for that player, as well as on the front side, it's going to have a space to store all of your different little meeples, such as your science meeples and your engineer meeples, and then it also will have a special ability that will be active for that player and will be defined by what it does or when it is triggered on the card itself. Underneath that are going to be two spots for your projects. So once you complete projects, they'll be slotted under here if you choose, and these will give you different benefits, either one-time benefit or when triggered or throughout the rest of the game, depending upon when you meet certain criteria. And there'll also be slots on your other board that you can unlock throughout the game that'll give you more slots that you can place different projects in that you've completed. Moving over to the middle board, this is going to be the board that will hold all of your main different types of buildings and your AI as well as your quibits or your uh, currency for the game. You'll have six large buildings and 12 small buildings throughout the game that you'll be able to place out when you build different buildings in different areas based on the type. And you'll see that a little bit more later in the video. And this is the limit. So if you ever use all six of your large buildings, that is it. You will not have access to any more large buildings for the rest of the game. And there is no way to move buildings or deconstruct buildings. So once you place them, they are there for the rest of the game. So you want to be selective on which buildings and where you put them. You'll also have artificial intelligence modules you'll be able to place out, and these will have certain benefits at the end of the game for scoring, as well as some other things you'll be able to use throughout the game. And then each player is going to have resources, and the main resource in the game is the Quibbit, and you'll be using this to place and use different resources, as well as paying costs for a number of different things. Finally, each player is also going to have their storage board, and this is going to hold the different resources, and there are four main resources in the game. Aerogel, in energy, regolith, and helium-3, which you're going to be trying to ship to Earth, as that is one of the main resources that Earth is in desperate need of. And with your storage, the other big thing you're going to notice are the different cubes in there. So these mean that these spaces are used and you don't have those resources. The empty spaces are the resources you have. So with this player currently, that player has one aerogel, two energy, and three regolith. And in order to use these, you're going to take one quibit from your spot and place it in that slot using that resource. But now it means that you don't have any more of that particular resource. And likewise, when you gain a resource, you're going to remove the quibit and add it back to the reserve or in some situations you might gain that as well. Above each player's board is spots for the different research cards and throughout the game as you're going to see a little bit later as you work your way up the research track you'll get to unlock research 
cards that will give you different benefits. And there's going to be three levels and each level you can only have one card in. So whenever you gain that level, you'll look through the available cards and choose one of them to place. And these are gonna have all different kinds of effects. Such as research one cards, we have the Space Fountain, which is going to grant you an ability. After completing a project, you're going to receive two victory points. Or with this one, the food processor, after constructing one of these types of buildings, you get to settle one engineer to it and receive one quibit. Then in level two research, you have things like the big data future mining, which is going to allow you to pay one, two, or four quibits to receive one, two, or three victory points. Or you're going to have the biobots, or cobots, that'll give you this effect. And then in the level three research, these are going to be end game victory conditions, or give you ways of gaining more victory points into the game, such as the super intelligent friendly AI, where you'll receive 10 victory points if you have at least five five of the AI modules on the main board. Or for example, this one, the high temperature superconductivity lets you get two victory points for each of your two different types of buildings that you have on the main board. And there'll be a lot of other ones as well. The next board I will look at is the development board, and this is going to track a couple of different things. The levels for both industry and science that each player has. At the beginning of the game, most players will start at the bottom of these tracks, and then throughout the game, as the players complete different things, such as building different buildings, they are going to gain levels in these different tracks, moving their tokens up along these tracks. At the end of the game, you're going to get victory points based on where your tokens are on these different tracks. As well as throughout the game, each time you pass one of these white thresholds, you're going to receive the benefits next to it. For example, when the blue player moves here, then that player is going to receive one scientist meeple. Or when this player moves to this space, it's going to get to choose a level one research card from the pile and add it to their area to add a permanent effect throughout the rest of the game. Likewise, on the industry side, it's the same effect. As you move your way up, you'll gain different benefits, such as here will get you two engineers, or here is going to unlock one of your locked areas that you can now place another project under, and so on throughout there. And you'll have a key on the side that is going to outline all those different effects. Then during the later stage of each round, there's going to be a shipment step and then it's going to having or have players ship different shipments and each one of these cards is going to have different criteria that are listed here that the player must have and be able to ship in order to receive the benefits with most of the cards granting players victory points into the game where other cards will give players potentially victory points into the game as well as instant effects such as this card that will give the player one quibit as well as four victory points into the game and there's going to be all kinds of different shipment cards that players can potentially activate throughout this particular step to be able to get more victory points into the game. In the later rounds of the game, there's also going to be a mandatory shipments phase where the players are going to have to ship Helium-3. Each of the round in rounds two and three, the players are going to have to ship the required amount. And if they are unable to, they're going to have to take a failed shipment token. At the end of the game, these are worth a negative five victory points. So these are not tokens that you want throughout the game. And so you're going to definitely want to try to meet those requirements and have the resources you need in order to meet those. The third board that players are going to be interacting with throughout the game is the support board. This board will tell the players what the current round is and also when the player phase in that round is going to end, which is when the final card is drawn from the subsidy draw pile. Throughout the players' turns, they're also going to be able to gain cards from the subsidies area that are available and these cards are going to each provide the player with a choice of two different options the player can take the first option which will have all kinds of different things gaining different quibits or different resources or they can simply take the two quibits from the other side of the the subsidy card and then discard it to the discard pile replacing it with a new card from the deck again when this deck runs out that is the end of the player phase in the round and the players will move into the income phase you also have a spot for the project deck, which is going to have new projects go out at the beginning of each round, as well as a spot to discard projects that you have not completed or chose not to complete. And the final set of boards that I want to go over are these city tiles. And there's going to be f three sets of these city tiles included in the game. Each set is going to represent a different type of region. For example, with these, there is going to be a matching set. So you'll have four cities per region. But this particular set is from the Pan American United States. And there'll be two other sets that are included in the game as well. 
Each one of these sets, again, will have four different cities. You'll have, this is one half of this, it'll be another side over here, that will have two additional cities. Each one of these will have a name, will have a spot for your AI modules to go, as well as a transit tax storage spot, which will place quibits in here when you're moving through, which I'll cover that later. And then you'll have the, each city has four different locations for buildings. And then each building has spots for engineers or scientists, and then the effects and things that the, that particular city can produce. Each city will also have a spot that, player, that players can go to and gain a card from that particular spot. And then when that player is at the city, they can choose to construct. So let's go ahead and say that we had a player, our blue player was here at Star Vegas. And so with that, he would gain that particular card, adding it to his hands. And then while he was here, he happened to have this in, uh, industrial complex card, and there happens to be an industrial complex space that's opened. In order to build that, then he's going to reference his card, and each one of the different buildings you can build is going to list the required resources you must spend in order to be able to build that building. From there, then, as long as you have that building type, again, there's two different types. You'll have small buildings and large buildings. So as long as you have a building miniature to match that type, you can pay the resources for it, and you have the matching card, you can build that building at that particular location, adding a car or a uh, miniature to that particular spot, and then you'll be able to get some benefits from that for completing it listed on the card here. And then you can also choose to complete the project, again, if those things match up, and gain whatever is listed here on that, or it'll have a triggering effect, again, part of that ninja building aspect of the game. And then later on, during different turns, players can also cooperate at these locations, placing different little meeples in there to those locations to put workers in there, which then can also generate different resources for the player that does the cooperate. And then we'll also generate uh, resources for players later in the game, as well as at the end of the game, during the victory point session, section, you're going to determine who has control of each city based on the buildings that they have and other requirements such as a AI modules and, and so on to determine control of each city, and that'll get them a bunch of victory points as well. And the final thing I would do is take you through a sample turn, but also give you an overview as the way that this game is structured, a sample turn isn't going to give you too much information on this. So I'm going to take you through that, but also give you a broader idea of, of what each one of the different phases in a round will entail. As the game itself is going to be played over three rounds, each round will be broken down into four phases the player phase, income phase, shipment phase, and cleanup phase. And each one of the, some of these phases will also have multiple turns within it that are going to take place and are certain conditions. So moving into the very first phase of the game, that is the player phase. During this phase, you're going to start with the first player and proceed clockwise around the table with each player getting to take a turn. During a player's turn, there are three possible things that player can do, and, and they'll only be able to do one of those things each turn. Now this is going to continue going from player to player until the subsidy deck runs out. Once that runs out, that is the end of that round or that player phase, and then you'll move into the income phase and handle that part. So let's go ahead and move into the player phase first, and I'll take you through each one of these three different actions that a player can choose to do. So starting with the blue player, that is going to be our starting player. And for that, I'm gonna go ahead and start with performing the construct action. So in order to do this, first off, the player is going to place their ship at the beginning of the game. They're going to choose one of the cities to place their ship on. They can do any city they want to. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Wolf. When I go to a new city that has a card in the destination spot, I'm going to get to gain that card and add it to my hands. From there, then I can choose one of the cards in my hands that I can that I want to try to build on that city. And each city has different buildings that it can build as well. And if I play a card that matches the city that I'm at, as well as the building that I want to build at that particular city, then I get to complete the project as well, which is going to give me different benefits. So I do happen to have a power plant that is at Wolf and that I can build, and it is an open spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose that card. From there, then I have to spend the resources required and a power plant requires me to spend one aerogel. And I do happen to have one aerogel for my, in my supply. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a quibit from my research area or from my supply area and place it in the aerogel, spending that resource. Then I will take a small building as this is a small building and place it in that location, building that, that building. And that will complete that portion of it. 
Now, anytime you complete a or build a building in a different location, you're also going to gain some construction bonus for that. And with me, I built a power plant, which is going to move me up one space on the industry track. So that'll move me up here. And then because of that, I'm also going to gain two engineers as a bonus for that. So I'll take two from the supply and then I'll place those in my area as a bonus. Then if I had any other abilities or anything, project completion abilities or anything that would be triggered, I would handle those at this point. Now my player does have a, a ability, but that's only going to apply to training centers and research stations. And I didn't build either one of those at this point, so I don't get any bonus for that. Now that I've completed this, then I handle the next part of that. With this being, a again, a, the location and building that matches, I get to complete this project, sliding it under one of my open areas, completing it, and then being able to activate that ability for the rest of the game or whatever it is. This particular one, it says, after advancing on the industry track, I also would gain one energy resource if I'm able to. Now, this only can be triggered one time per turn, and so the first time I would go up on the track, that's when I would gain it, no matter the number of times I go up on the track during any particular player turn. But that already happened, so I won't trigger this at this point. From there, that is going to end that player's turn, and it would move over to the next player in clockwise order. From there, the next example I want to look at is a collaborate action. For this one, I normally you wouldn't necessarily do this at this early point in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and populate a couple more things to show you a little bit more about this example. So we'll go ahead and say that multiple turns has passed and the blue player has added more buildings to this particular planet, really trying to gain control of it. And with the yellow player, I'm going to go ahead and say that that player has a couple of extra engineers to really flesh out this example. So at this point, the yellow player notices that this player has really been focusing on that planet and has a number of different buildings at that planet that this player could take advantage of and gain some much needed resources. So we'll go ahead and say that, that, that the yellow player has moved to this particular planet. And now that they're at this, this planet, they have a, a number of different options. First off, they can choose to place a meeple in each one of the cities. They can do one meeple per city. So for example, this one, they could not drop two engineers on there. And for each meeple that they drop, they're going to gain a victory point or a number of victory points based on the type of meeple that they're dropping. For each engineer, they're gonna get one victory point. And for each of the scientists that they place down, they're going to get two victory points. So they picked up four victory points by doing this. And each time you gain victory points, you're gonna place it face down on your area. Now you can choose to look at that at any point during your their turn or your game. Next, the player can choose to produce resources from either the basic resource as well as the city locations that there are meeples at. So with this, he's going to go ahead and produce the basic resource. So you're going to take a cube from your storage and place it on there. And then you're also going to, he can choose to produce at each one of these locations. So he's going to go ahead and do that. So he's going to go ahead and gain an energy. So he'll add one there. He wants to gain a helium three. And then at the final location with the scientist, he has, there isn't a resource for that. So he must take it from his reserve with his quibits. So he's going to go ahead and place one there. And then he's going to activate this ability on here. So this says at the location, you can spend an engineer to gain an additional victory point. So let's go ahead and handle that. And we'll gain one for that. And at this point, there's nothing else that this player can do at this particular location. So that'll end the collaborate action. And we'll move on to the next one. Now the final action that, or the final option as an action you can choose to take during your turn is a raise funds action. So let's go ahead and say that it went back to the blue player, that player did something, and now we're back to the yellow player. And let's say that that player is, is down to just this. And that player really wants to build a building. They have a, uh, a mining site that they would love to drop and they can make their way up here. So let's go ahead and say during their movement step, they move here, you can move one space for free during your move action. And any additional spaces you move, you have to pay a quibit to the city that you're leaving. So I can go from Wolf over here to Leningrad or uh, Lindgren and then up to this location here and I have to drop a quibit into that transport area there. But now that I'm here, this particular a mining site is going to cost my player quite a bit. It need That player would need two aqua gel and a regolith, which I do have. 
but I don't have the quibits to place in there to use those resources. So at this point, I, during my turn, I am going to do a raise funds. So anytime you do a raise funds, you're automatically going to get three quibits. You'll add to your resource area. And then you also get to choose a subsidy to, that you'll gain. And each one of these, again, is going to either give you two additional quibits or you can select the other option for these. For example, with this one, I can choose to receive a Helium-3 and a Quibit, which would be huge. That's a really good one. Or this one, I could choose to pay to Quibit to receive an Energy and a Regolith. But since I was trying to gain the Quibits, I don't really want to spend them for that one. So this one sounds really good. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this one's going to let me receive a Helium-3, which lets me remove that and return to the supply, but I also gain a Quibit, so I'm simply going to just add this over to my area as part of that. This this will be discarded, and then a new one is revealed. And again, when the run out of cards in the draw pile, that will end the player round, or the player phase, and then we'll move into the income phase. So that is the third type of option you have as the players. And each round, or each player turn, you get to do one of those actions. So from here, let's go ahead and say that, that we, then we ended the round or the player round or player phase. So then we move into the income phase. During this phase, the player's buildings are going to potentially give them quibits. So that was when I was talking about how this can have some negative effects for the yellow player. This is what I'm talking about here. So any, or a, any quibits that are on the basic resource are going to be moved to the transport tax storage section. And if there's a transport building there, that player would receive those particular quibits. Then the player is going to receive any quibits that have been attached to any of their buildings during their turn. So now all of a sudden the blue player has received three quibits from the yellow player basically taking those actions on those buildings. Then you would carry out any other additional abilities that you had that were would be resolved during this step and then you're ready to move on to the shipment phase. So during the shipment phase, the players are going to take turns, starting with the player highest on the industry track and then moving from there. So blue will go first, then yellow, and then it would go back to blue. In higher player games, again, it'll be based on, on those different parameters. From there, then the player is going to choose one of the shipment cards that they wish to carry out if they're able to. Now, if they can't, then they simply would pass and it would go to the next player who could choose to complete one. Once all the players have chosen to pass, then it'll move into the next phase. Now, during rounds two and three, you're also going to have a mandatory shipment step that you must carry out and each player must resolve it. If they cannot, again, then they must draw one of these tokens, which will give them negative points at the end of the game. So let's go look at one quick example of this. So with my player right now, I don't have any helium three. I was not, uh, didn't plan this this part super well as far as my player is concerned. Now again, I only took one turn. So from there, then then I only have really one option with this, and this is another potential strategy with the players is keeping an eye on potential shipments that, that those players can make and different resources that they might need for those that you could potentially liquidate from them or whatnot. So with this one, all I have is this one option here, which allows me to choose one resource. And at the end of the game, this is gonna give me one victory point. And then upon completion of the shipment, I would get two quibits. So let's go ahead and say I have three regoliths. So I'm gonna go ahead and use one of those to complete this particular shipment. That's going to get me one victory point at the end of the game. And it'll also get me two quibits right now. And then I will place it up here in the completed shipments section of my board. From here, we would move over to the yellow player. And that player does have quite a bit of resources. So they could potentially ship out a number of different or complete a number of different shipments. And again, it would go back and forth until both players have passed or all the shipments have been handled. Once they've resolved that, then there is an unscheduled shipment. So some players will be able to get shipment cards throughout their turns, and they can choose to complete those at this point if they have the resources for those. Once both players have passed or there's no more shipments to take care of, then you'd move into the cleanup phase where you're going to reshuffle the discard pile for the subsidy deck. You'll move the track, the marker forward one space. You're going to refill any spots on the board that don't have a card, a projects card on them. And then you'd move into the next player's turn. And you're going to again do this until the end of the game, at which point then the players are all going to total up all of their victory points from their shipments and any of their boards on there, any other victory points that they have and all kinds of different stuff. And then the player that has the most points will be the winner of the game.
So I hope this gives you a basic overview of how the game plays and gives you a better understanding on whether or not this is one you want to back on Kickstarter. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by Kickstarter's comment section and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and are more than happy to answer any questions you have. Until next time, I'll see you later.